what is up everyone welcome back to another astronaut stream here i know it's been a very long time since i've done a stream i don't do them as consistently as i used to but i am definitely back for this particular stream and we definitely have a lot of important stuff to talk about um mortal kombat 11 is on the table now and uh, just as i said in my last stream um it does look like uh, another room pretty much is winding down on um, Injustice 2, they just released that final collector's edition that has all the characters in it, um, all of the um, um, downloadable content, everything has pretty much been uh, like wrapped up with Injustice 2 and now the internet is going crazy talking about Mortal Kombat 11. Everyone was thinking that there was going to be some kind of leak of information about Mortal Kombat 11 at the, um, that there was a, uh, uh, there was a conference, there was a, uh, develop, uh, a developers conference, I think a few weeks ago that Ed Boon was tweeting about, and um, everyone really kind of got ahead of themselves. They thought that Ed Boon was going to make an announcement about Mortal Kombat 11 on, um, at that developers conference a few weeks ago, and of course there was not anything to announce. They, uh, Ed Boon did not make any references to Mortal Kombat 11 in that developers uh, conference, but that does not mean that there's not uh, more information to come. And uh, and realistically speaking, I honestly don't expect there to be anything significant about Mortal Kombat 11 until uh, probably E3, which would be around about June. And uh, if you notice, this year is already going very quickly, um, and it's already pretty much almost April. So. Uh, have they said day for Mortal Kombat 11? BC B9. Welcome to the stream, B9. No, they have not set a release date for Mortal Kombat 11. So, um, but anyways, so in this stream, um, if you've noticed, I titled this stream the best Mortal Kombat ever, and there is a reason for that because I caught Ed Boon in an interview that he gave, and he literally said that Mortal Kombat 9 and Mortal Kombat 2 were the two best Mortal Kombat's that they have done in the entire series. Chuck. Chuck Avelli, I think they should reboot Sub-Zero game. Chuck, welcome to the stream. Thank you for your comment. Um, that would be very interesting if they did that. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who are fans of the uh, Sub-Zero Mythology series, So, but I'll get, that, get to that in just a minute. But what I wanted to talk about was I do believe that Mortal Kombat 11 is going to be the best Mortal Kombat ever. And the stage is already set for um, another room to basically take a lot of groundbreaking steps to really, you know, uh, upgrade the series into a direction and to a level that they've never taken it before. What's up, Chocolate? Welcome to the stream. What other Mortal Kombat characters do you think should be playable? Um, B9, I will get to that in just a second. Um, I, I want to really kind of talk about the subject matter first, and then I'll just kind of get into people's comments. Um, but um, like I was saying, um, all of the current platforms, the major current platforms such as the, the PS4 Pro, the Xbox One X, and um, the Xbox One S, um, they all either have true 4K ability or they have the, the upscaling ability which is kind of like fake 4K but it basically enhances the graphics and allows for a clearer picture but it's not quite as uh, it's not quite as th on the level as true native 4K, which is the Xbox One X. MK11 is going to look sick in 4K. Exactly. Exactly, Chocolate. That's why I'm talking about it in the stream. Um, so now, so now Netherum has the tools to basically craft basically the most visually stunning uh, Mortal Kombat game ever. And with all of these, uh, with all these game engines that's processing at these much higher processing levels, with the exception of the Nintendo Switch, which of course has a completely different uh, game engine and all of that stuff, but with the PS4 Pro, the Xbox One S, and the Xbox One X, all of these systems are basically going to be able to work together to really uh, deliver a, vi a visually stunning Mortal Kombat 11 game. This game is going to be able to have a lot of renderings, like the background should be much richer, much fuller, there should be much more interactions. We know that more Netherrealm loves to have the interactable items in the background. They love to have a lot of uh, activity going on with, you know, people talking and walking and then, uh, you know, kind of natural effects such as trees and snow and rain, things like that. I wonder if they're going to have an exclusive character in Mortal, in Mortal Kombat 11. I hope there's a lot, I hope a lot of game, game modes. Yes, Chocolate, yeah, game modes, that would be really cool. Definitely, um, kinda, I'm kind of like, you need to throw in as much as you possibly can just to keep our attention. So more game modes, the better. But, um, so, uh, you know, so, um, so with 4K, 
uh, at the disposal of NetherRealm Studios, they can really put in a lot of really uh, extra detail into a lot of the backgrounds, uh, the background stages. They can um, uh, one of the two stage, I mean, two of the stages that really stuck out with me for Mortal Kombat X was the Koatan Jungle and the Sky Temple. The Sky Temple actually had the rain and the thunder while you were playing, and then um, uh, the Koatan Jungle was really or the Kwatan. I forget how, how to pronounce it, but the Quadden Jungle was really, really cool because um, the combatants were actually fighting across a river. So if you notice, uh, if you've taken the time to uh, notice what's going on on the Quadden stage, um, what's up? What's up, Jay from Houston? Welcome to the stream. Um, when the combatants are fighting on the uh, Quadden Jungle, what's up, Garrett Larson? Thank you for joining the stream. Um, when they're fighting on the uh, uh, on the Kowatin Jungle uh, stage, they're um, they're actually fighting on a river that's flowing. So if you notice, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you actually see the water as it's actually overflowing on top of their shoes. And every time a combatant takes a step, it splashes. So um, and on top of that, they actually have the vines that you can swing from and yada 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 yada. And so the reason I mentioned these two stages is because I believe these two stages are probably the, the most visually stunning stages that they use in Mortal Kombat X. And so with 4K at their disposal for Mortal Kombat 11, I think it gives NetherRealm the opportunity to create stages that have much more, um, much more elaborate um, elements going on. Um, you know, like uh, the, um, the Lin Kuei Temple with uh, Sub-Zero, his stage did have like snow falling, which was a really nice touch. I hope we get a trailer E3. Chocolate, I hope so too. It should be in June, I believe. Um, so, but I would really like to see them deliver on, you know, more weather effects. It would be really great to see more weather effects, like more snow falling, more rain falling, um, more wind blowing, um, maybe even have like smoke that is kind of present on some stages. Um, different, different factors that can kind of impact um, the the gameplay experience and also um, I, I really like it when games like kind of play around the with the ideas of day or night what guest characters do you want in Mortal Kombat 11 B9 I'd have to give a lot of thought to that because it would have to be horror movie characters and right now they've gone through the, the most important horror movie characters I'd really have to think about who might uh, who might be added like maybe Pinhead and Mike Myers I think Shaolin Mux 2 is coming before 11 Chuck, I hope not because I really want Mortal Kombat 11. But anyways, going back to what I was saying, um, uh, yeah, so I, I really like games that play play around with the idea of night and day. Um, so Michael Myers and Pinhead, yep, that's what I just said, chocolate. So it would be really interesting if they incorporated night and day elements in Mortal Kombat 11, where in, if you play if you play certain stages at a certain time, you actually would. I'll be allowed to play you could play on a certain stage during the daytime where you could see certain visuals a little more clearly and then maybe at certain times of day you might actually or depending on how the game is structured you might be able to play on certain stages where it's actually nighttime which might get, which might allow for some sort of shift in you know the the um, the uh, the, the gameplay element like there might be different interactables that you can use at night versus what you can use during the daytime so um, I really hope that Mortal Kombat, I mean uh, that NetherRealm takes advantage of um, what all they can do with 4k with the interactables with the background possibly using night and day as two elements to affect what what can what can take place at different times on different stages Hopefully we get more stage more combat load. Bless Scarlet. Welcome to the stream, Bless Scarlet. So good to see you. Um Yes, um, I, I hope so too, because it seemed like we didn't really get a lot in Mortal Kombat 10. We only got like, I think, what, uh, 10, 10, 12 stages, and then of course they added the infected element, so you could actually play on s the same stages, but infected, where everything was red. So, you know, that was an interesting twist, but, you know, I think they could have done a little bit more with that. Um, but anyways, so, uh, so yeah, so this stream is basically talking about how this game is going to be really incredible in 4K. I'm really excited. Is Scarlet going to be in the next Mortal Kombat? B9, I honestly have no clue. Right now, we don't have a lot to go on. Um, but one thing I would like to talk about is um, the villain. Um, I honestly think that um, a lot of people are talking about uh, Raiden being dark and being evil, him possibly uh, possibly being the villain for Mortal Kombat 11, and I would love to see that. I think it's, it's long overdue for Raiden to be a villain, but another person who I think would be a very good candidate for a villain would probably be Liu Kang, because in his ending, or in one of the endings in Mortal Kombat 9, I think it was Shang Tsung, um, uh, Liu Kang actually went on to become a god and he became so bloodthirsty and out of control. So, uh, is the MK Comics canon? You know, that's a really good question. Um, 
B9. I honestly believe that Netherroom is actually wanting to keep the comics and the actual gameplay uh, that's within the storylines within the, the video games separate from each other, but slightly inter you know slightly related to one another. Uh, we see Scarlet in Mortal Kombat 11. That would be interesting. Um, but yeah, so I think Liu Kang would be a really good candidate to be a villain for Mortal Kombat 11 because he was seen seen as being like a blood, he had become a bloodthirsty god at the end of Mortal Kombat 9 in certain endings. Um, so I think it, it would be very interesting. And he, him and Katana have already become the Dark Emperor and Dark Empress of Netherrealm. So that I feel like that just pushes him a step further towards some sort of dark revelation of his character. So uh, so my I'm putting money on either Raiden or Liu Kang being the dark uh, being the, the dark villains. I wonder if Jade is gonna be in the next game. Um, I would like to see Jade come back as well, definitely. But I would I'm definitely placing my money on Raiden and I, or on Liu Kang for being uh, the dark the, the villains. Um, and also uh, I think it's really interesting to mention the fact that um, Raiden um, uh, you know um, I don't know if they're going to, oh wait, Anthony Smith, who is this mystery woman in MK9 when Jane defeated Shao Kahn? <coughs> Anthony Smith. Anthony, welcome to the stream. How about Jeepers Creepers? Um, Anthony, um, I, we don't know if that was canon or not. Um, Jade got taken over. She got possessed by the dream goddess, I believe. Uh, she was some sort of dream goddess. And so, uh, but they never explained it because Jade never came back from Mortal Kombat 10. And so we don't know if she ever really officially got possessed or not. But if she comes back in Mortal Kombat 11, we know that she did become a revenant in Mortal Kombat 9. So at the very least, we can expect Jade to be, to come back as a revenant character if she's playable again, because that's the only canon aspect about her uh, story so far. Liu Kang would definitely be good because Raiden is going to be the villain. And that's at least what I think. What if they had Dracula as a guest character? B9, um, I don't know about Dracula. Dracula is a little... Um, they like to use a lot of characters that are relevant right now and there aren't really any Dracula movies going on so I don't know if they really incorporate that into the... unless there would be a Dracula movie coming out in, Mortal Kombat, in uh, 20, 2019 that I don't know about. And I think it's safe to say that this game is going to come out in 2019. I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to see Mortal Kombat 11 in 2018 at all. Um, because Ed Boon did say that um, they were going to continue to support Injustice 2 for 2018 and beyond. So I think we can definitely say with a with a, a certain amount of certainty that we will definitely not see Mortal Kombat 11 this year. It will definitely be next year. Uh, what about the Joker? Well, um, they had the Joker with Mortal Kombat versus DC. You can't do fatalities, I don't believe, on the DC characters, so I don't think he'll be in there. I hope the Revenants go back to normal Mortal Kombat 11. Chocolate, I think, I hope so too, because there's still like six or seven people who are still Revenants that didn't come back in Mortal Kombat 10, so I think they will resurface in Mortal Kombat 11, and hopefully they will explain that. So, um... But yes, uh, yeah, going back to my villain discussion, so I was talking about how Raiden might very well be the villain, and um, we also see um, uh, Liu Kang being a very good uh, candidate for villain. Um, but one important thing I wanted to talk about is I think there are a lot of clues to Mortal Kombat 11 that I think a lot of people overlook. And it hasn't been, it's only been recently that I've taken the time to really pay attention to some things that happened in Mortal Kombat 10 that really is kind of giving you a clue. Uh, do you think there will be a huge time gap? Like, um, uh, you know, I honestly, uh, you can. I don't think so. Um, because if they did another time gap, that would put the char the main characters, at being like like sixty. You know, the time gap from in Mortal Kombat 10 put them up to being like forty, where they had the gray hair. So I don't think they'll do another time gap because that would put them up to being about fifty or sixty years old. Kung Lao ladder ending might be canon. Okay, Scarlet in Mortal Kombat 11. Okay, Mortem, welcome to this. Welcome to the uh, stream. So going back to what I was talking about, um, guys, I want to bring some. I want to bring your attention to some things that um, uh, that I think people are overlooking in Mortal Kombat 10, and I think they're very big clues if you know what to look for and how to look for them. Because the costumes that Liu Kang and Katana had, um, and Raiden, Raiden, Katana, and Liu Kang, all three had costumes that basically showed you showed you exactly how Mortal Kombat 10 was going to end and probably how Mortal Kombat 11 is going to end I mean how it's going to begin because even if you didn't play the story mode for Mortal Kombat X if you just jumped right into uh, if you just jump right into just playing versus and playing against a computer and unlocking a lot of the the character uh, costumes and stuff Liu Kang had the Dark Emperor costume Katana had the Dark Empress costume and um, Raiden had the Dark Raiden costume I don't think so. Um, 
So, so I think these costumes, by them making these costumes available, I think these costumes were giving you a clue as to what was going to happen at the end of Mortal Kombat 10. Because during, if you look, if you notice throughout um, Mortal Kombat 10 during the story mode, you see, um, uh, you see Liu Kang and Katana in their Revenant costumes. You see them in their Revenant costumes. But at the end of the game, once you defeat the game, you finally see them in their Dark Emperor, Dark Empress costumes. Do you think more skins will explain will explain more? More skins will explain more? Yes, I think so. If you actually took the time to maybe study some of this. But I'm just uh, bringing people's attention to this because I'm like, you know, these costumes, you know, if you're just playing the game, you you might just be like, oh, Revenant costumes, yay, let me play the Revenant costumes. But if you actually pay attention, you know, you don't see Katana and Liu Kang in their Dark Emperor, Dark Empress costumes until the end of the video game after you defeat everything. So the dark, so those costumes are really giving you a clue into how Mortal Kombat X was going to end and probably how Mortal Kombat 11 is going to begin. Also, I can imagine how Pinhead moveset will be. Man, Pinhead is going to be like psycho crazy if they include him. But also, a really big interesting clue is the fact that when you get Raiden's dark Raiden costume, he actually has the pin of Shinnok that's attached to his costume. So, you know, so so let's say, so if you unlocked that costume of Raiden's before, let's say, you know, before you beat the game or whatever, his costume tells you exactly what's going to happen. The fact that Shinnok was going to be defeated and he was going to take the pin. Hope Dever's ending is canon. Reptile, Kraken cra cra skin, they should include Ash from the Evil Dead. I've heard people mention Ash before um, as a possible downloadable character. Uh, Antoine, welcome back, Antoine. Good to see you. So I'm just saying that um, Netherrealm is very, very creative, and they're very, very sneaky. And so these costumes, some of these costumes that you could download and use on the characters like Raiden's Dark, Dark Raiden costume and the Emperor Empress costumes, all those costumes were clues as to the ending of Mortal Kombat X and probably the beginning of Mortal Kombat 11. Also, another clue that I think is really interesting is the fact that um, I said this in my last stream when I was talking about Melina, but when Melina goes up against, uh, uh, when she goes up against, um, what's his name? Uh, I'm blanking out on his name. Uh, uh, Tremor. Uh, when Melina goes up against Tremor, Tremor says, um, in the dream room you were born, but in this room you are dead. So we know in the story mode, Melina got killed. So, but if you pay attention to her variation, what three variations does Melina have? She has ethereal, she has piercing, and she has ravenous. Now, if you if you pay if you connect her variations to what Trimmer said, he said in the dream realm you are reborn. So one of her variations is the ethereal variation, and everyone knows that the word ethereal is relating to something that is dreamlike. It is dreamlike. It is ethereal. It is something that is that vanishes and reappears. That has the ability to appear almost real, almost like a mirage, but not not right, not co not quite. I mean, so so Trimmer, you know, so so I'm you know, so I say all of this to say that certain people's costumes in Mortal Kombat X can be clues for Mortal Kombat 11 and for the future of the of the story mode. Um, if if Melina returns, it's very possible she may return from the Dream Realm. And um, if she returns from the Dream Realm, then that would mean that her ethereal variation was a clue letting us know what was going to happen to her in Mortal Kombat 11. Now, I don't know if, um, I don't know if, um, uh, Mortem, Scarlet, Melina, uh, Noob Side by Triborg, Jade, Smoke, all, Mortem, all those would be great, great, uh, returning characters, especially Melina. Feral Skin for Ermac, maybe, maybe he is resurrected in Egypt. Buchan. Well, you know, um, it's interesting, Buchan, because in Ermac's story ending, he is killed by Shang Tsung because Shang Tsung is one of the souls that's inside of Ermac, and he actually destroys Ermac to get himself free. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen with your Ermac coming up. I heard that they're going to put Michael Myers in Mortal Kombat 11. Michael Myers is a very good candidate, and at this point, I think Michael Myers is the most popular horror movie character choice because they've run through everybody else. Who wants this work injustice? Who wants this work injustice? Uh, I don't quite catch that line in Twan. Anyway, so going back to what I was saying. So guys, Aaron Cow, welcome back to the stream. So MK11 will be on 4K. Of course, Aaron, of course, of course it will be. Um, so going back to what I was saying, uh, guys. So I believe that if you pay attention to people's costumes in Mortal Kombat 11, I mean in Mortal Kombat 10, especially Katana, 
Luke, Luke Kang and Raiden, all three of those costumes are get, are setting the stage for Mortal Kombat 11. Also, if you pay attention to certain people's variations, there might be clues in that because more because Melina has her ethereal variation. Like I said, Tremor said that she was going to be reborn in the Dream Realm. They should give Sonya MK3 skin. Um, also, um, let's see what I was about to say. Something. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh. Let's see. But it will work on PS4 Slim. Got to be a villain for Warner Brothers. Um. Yes. Okay, so welcome to the stream, guys. We're up to 13 people, and I and the topic of the stream is Mortal Kombat 11 being the greatest Mortal Kombat installment because now Netherum has the ability to use 4K and all of the resources of 4K um, to, you know, basically design the game and basically make it visually incredibly incredible, the stages, the outfits. One thing I really hope they do is I hope they really work on the appearance of the characters because in Mortal Kombat 10, uh, when you got really up close to the characters, a lot of the characters did look a little plastic. So, um, like action figures, Quan Chi is too smart to be dead for real since Quan Chi is one of Boone's favorite characters. It would be they bring Kai back. Well, Buchan, if you notice, uh, according to the storyline for Mortal Kombat 10, um, uh, it was actually a part of Quan Chi's plan to kill himself because something about him killing himself was connected to Shinnok being brought into the realm. So when he, when he allowed himself to get, get killed, it really, you know, it really wasn't him just, it wasn't an accident. It was actually a setup. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, there's just so much I wanted to get into about this topic, though. Uh, so, um, so I was talking about the villain, and then I was also talking about, um, oh yeah, looking at some foreshadowings from Mortal Kombat 10 into Mortal Kombat 11. So guys, I think um, Mortal, um, oh, 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 and another thing, guys, um, if you notice, Mortal Kombat 9 ended with Raiden uh, standing next to uh, Sonya Blade and Johnny Cage. And then, it, and then we also saw Quan Chi standing next to Shinnok. So if you notice, the ending for Mortal Kombat 9 set up the stage for Mortal Kombat 10 because Shinnok went on to be the, the villain, Quan Chi played a major role, and then uh, Sonya Blade got married to uh, um, uh, Johnny Cage and they had, um, they had Cassie Cage. They're going to make Onaga work since he's the tallest character. Interesting chocolate. I have a theory about uh, Onaga though. So, so by looking at the ending for Mortal Kombat 9, that set up the stage for Mortal Kombat 10. And so at the end of Mortal Kombat 10, we see Raiden, and then we see another couple. We see Katana and Liu Kang with Raiden. So I think that's setting the stage for Mortal Kombat 11. Okay, so now I want to talk about something that it, a lot of rumors are circulating, and apparently people are really desperate to see a lot of characters return from Armageddon and from Deception. Um, hope we get Shujinko. A lot of people really, really uh, want to see a lot of these characters from Armageddon and Deception come back, especially Onaga and Blaze and people like that. But guys, I really want to bring attention to the fact that you have to keep in mind that since the reboot in Mortal Kombat 9, for some particular reason, Netherrealm has made a specific, a specific effort to avoid using a lot of the characters, actually all of them, like from from this Deadly Alliance on, no characters have been brought back as playable. All of the playable characters since the realms are all in chaos. I wonder if some of the guys will be playable. Oh, water, fire. Interesting, Buchan. Buchan, hi. I'm sorry, I didn't take the time to say hello. Hello, my favorite friend. So good to see you, Buchan. It's been a very long time. Um, so guys, I just really want to pay. Uh, Anthony, I can imagine Psylocke and uh, Psylocke. That's Marvel. Anthony, that would not happen. Um. So anyway, so I think people are getting so excited about the idea of Onaga and Blaze and, you know, maybe Dagon and Taven and all these characters coming back. But you have to keep in mind that for some reason, uh, they're going to use Goro as a host for Onaga. Um, for some reason, Netherrealm has made a decision not to bring, not to make any characters playable from the 2000 series. Um, uh, would love to see Noob Saiba. Okay, Psychopathic Ninja. Welcome to the stream, Psychopathic Ninja. For some reason, Netherrealm has decided not to make any playables from the 2000 series. All the characters that have come back or have been playable, they have been play they have been characters from Mortal Kombat 1 through Mortal Kombat 4. That's it. They've done this for a reason. Now, I don't necessarily know exactly what the reason is, but for some reason, Mortal Kombat 9 and Mortal Kombat 10 have only either had brand new characters or they've had characters from Mortal Kombat 1 through Mortal Kombat 4. That is it. So, um, a lot of people are getting real excited. I've been watching some Mortal Kombat videos, Mortal Kombat 11 videos, where people are speculating, saying, Oh, I have some sources that have been saying, 
that have been saying um, uh, uh, they've seen some drawings of Dagon and Taven and, and Onaga and blah, blah, blah. And here's my thing. First off, I really think that Ed Boon is going to be very, very careful with bringing back Onaga and Blaze, especially since they were the main villains for Deception and Armageddon. If they were to bring back those two villains, that might be a distraction for the story mode. For the storyline, they, they've purposely created a brand new storyline with Mortal Kombat 9, and they have left out all the 2000 series villains and characters. So I, I'm really skeptical on the idea of Onaga and Blaze coming back because I think them being villains in the past might be some sort of distraction to the, the current timeline. Um, going to be playable characters. I do not know BC9, B9, I'm sorry. But to be honest with you, Taven and Dagon were both mentioned in... Um, as being discovered by Kenshi and Takeda back in Mortal Kombat 10. So if there were some characters to return from the 2000 series or maybe Armageddon, I would put my money on Taven and Dagon since they were already incorporated into certain character endings in Mortal Kombat 10. But I wouldn't really jump off a cliff and say that Onaga's coming back and all that and all that. Probably like Lee Mei, that's false. Kenshi is a 2000 character. Oh, Kenshi. Wait, wait, wait. Kenshi, no, Kenshi was in Mortal Kombat 4, wasn't he? Wasn't Kenshi in Mortal Kombat 4? I could be wrong. If I am wrong, then I'm wrong, so I'll accept that. But I think he was in Mortal Kombat 4. Let's see, okay. But either way, either way, whether Kenshi, let's see, debuted in Deadly Alliance. Okay, okay. No, Deadly Alliance. Okay, so... So, okay, either way, either way, guys. No, Kenji was in MK Daily Alliance. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you. Wah, wah, wah. I was wrong. I was wrong. But either way, my point still stands on the fact that for some reason, um, Netherrealm is dancing around the idea of using the 3D character, the 3D era characters. Okay. So, um, can you read my last comment? Um, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Buchan, don't steal my wah wah wah. Okay, it's my wah wah wah. I work hard for my wah wah wahs. Anyways, so okay, but my point still remains. For some reason, Nether Realm is not all that excited about using the 3D era characters. Okay, so okay, so if we take Kenshi, Kenshi is one person from the 3D era, and maybe they took Kenshi because he was probably the most popular of the of the 3D era characters. So, but that but, but Kenshi, apart from Kenshi, nobody else has come back. And Lee May came back. She was from Deadly Alliance, but she came back as a non-playable character, so she wasn't playable. So, um, so anyways, so um, I'm just really skeptical when I start hearing a lot of a lot of people talking about the Mortal Kombat 11 video, saying, "Oh yeah, Onaga's coming back and all that stuff." I really don't know. At the end of Mortal Kombat reboot, is I have a final battle just like Mortal Kombat in you know, the Mortal Kombat reboot. Uh, you know. Actually, um, B9, a lot of people would love to see that because a lot of people love and miss Armageddon. Everyone wants to be able to play as all the characters all at once. I don't think that Netherrealm will ever do that. I don't think they'll do that because I think part of the reason they did Armageddon was because they were desperate for money. Mortal Kombat franchise at the time wasn't doing very well. And they just pretty much threw in as much possible stuff into uh, Armageddon as possible, including the creative fighter, including the... Uh, the um, uh, the different, the conquest mode, all that stuff. I think they did all of that for Armageddon just to keep themselves afloat as a studio. So, um, yes. Who's your favorite character? Melina. Melina is my favorite character, Anthony. That's why I really hope she comes back from Mortal Kombat 11. Um, I was just about to make a really good point and I can't remember what it was. I hope they make a good intro into Mortal Kombat Deception and Deadly Alliance. Well, you know, and that also goes back into the whole 4K thing, Chocolate, as well, because, um, you know, I really think that, um, oh, yeah, he is from, oh, that's right, Bill Raichel is from Deadly Alliance, I believe. So that's two characters from the 3D era. Okay. But, yeah, um, with, with using 4K, that also means that, you know, the music is going to be really great. That's why this, this game has got to be the very best Mortal Kombat game ever because the music should be amazing with the 4k the graphics should be amazing with the 4k and the characters the drawings all the different costumes oh i remember what i was going to talk about so guys in a lot of past streams i've been talking a lot about gear customization and i've been really wanting um 
I've been really wanting them to put gear customization in Mortal Kombat 11, but I've decided to take that back. I don't want gear customization in Mortal Kombat 11 because I honestly believe that gear customization turned Injustice 2 into a big cash cow. And I don't like, um, and I don't want Mortal Kombat 11 to become a cash cow. I want Mortal Kombat 11 to be taken seriously as a game. I want the fighting to be serious. I want it to be focused on, you know, the combo systems and the, the game mechanics. I want, I want the uh, the really cool costumes. Although I still want to have more selections. I don't think that they gave us enough selections in Mortal Kombat 10 with all of the characters. And I didn't like the fact that some characters had like eight skins seven or eight skins and some characters only have one or two and then all of the all of the downloadable characters only had one one skin which was completely ridiculous is noob cybot gonna come back i hope so b9 i think noob cybot is one of the more popular characters um so yes yeah, so i mean so gear customization is, is really tempting but i know a lot of people did not like gear customization because of the stats and yes new style for sub-zero and scorpion yes um you know so so yeah so I don't want gear customization for Mortal Kombat 11 I think it, I don't want Mortal Kombat 11 to become a big cash cow I don't want the stats that might get attached to it um, and I think Mortal Kombat 11 compared to Injustice 2 Mortal Kombat 11 is mu is much more a much more realistic fighter type game um, I still don't like there are certain ads and so you know Mortal Kombat just comes across as uh, you know a, a, a fighting style of game a, a fighting style that is just much more real much more, honest to how real people fight how real people interact the, the, the kind of things that people would really say if they were going up against each other in a real fight um injustice 2 was kind of disney you know everyone was saying things that were just so like so 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 frou-frou and all that kind of like you know uh you know starfire starfire had some of the most corniest stuff to say um power girl had corny stuff to say um do you think they will make an injustice 3 Yes, I do, Chocolate. Um, Ed Boon, uh, <laughs> Ed Boon probably has made so much money off of Injustice 2, he could probably retire now and not make another video game. So I definitely think they'll be in an Injustice 3. And even if they don't do an Injustice 3, I definitely believe they will do another uh, DC Comics-based game. They might do a crossover or something, but um, it might turn out to be maybe a, like more, you know, Mortal Kombat versus DC again. Uh, it, it, you know, they might not do any, you know, any, an Injustice 3 exactly like that, just version 3, but it will, there will definitely be another DC Comics based uh, Netherrealm game. So is Sub-Zero and Scorpion going to be the new protectors of Earthrealm? Well, BC9, as of right now, Raiden is still the protector of Earthrealm. Um, the only problem is, you know, uh, in his ending for Mortal Kombat 10, he kind of gets a little power hungry and decides to start attacking the other realms. So, Creator Fighter was trash. Well, Buchan, if you notice, Creator Fighter was the beginning stages of of, care, uh, of gear customization. Because if you notice, the screen for Creator Fighter and then the screen for gear customization, they're identical. You have the character, you can rotate them, and you pick and choose what you want to add to the character. So, Creator Fighter was just an early form of, of gear customization. And then they just kind of like tweaked it. And instead of instead of calling it Creative Fighter, they decided to just call it Gear Customization. Keep the character the keep the character the same. Just change their hair, their look, their clothes, stuff like that. So, exactly. Anyways, but um, yes. So um, like I was just saying about uh, Gear Customization, yeah, I definitely don't want it for Mortal Kombat 11. Although I really hope that they do give more skins and more uh, more uh, costumes for the characters. Is Robocop going to be Robocop? DC9, I don't really know, but Robocop would be a very good choice because Robocop, he's he's a violent character. Um, and uh, But, you know, Robocop and Terminator, I think, are kind of pretty much in the same vein, you know? Uh, so either one would probably be very good. I think I actually think Terminator would probably be more popular, though, because they, they, they made way more way more Terminator movies so um, but anyways yeah so a uh, Mortal Kombat 11 in 4k is gonna be great Young Ty they can keep variations for Mortal Kombat 11 I think it'll be okay yeah Young Ty I agree with you um, Pyramid Head I don't know much about Pyramid Head uh, DC B9 um, but yes Young Ty yes I do agree you know if anything uh, more skins not like add-on like they did in just two right exactly psychopathic um, but you know, I really would like to see them evolve the variation system. 
um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, I don't want to see, like, if, the, if whatever characters come back from Mortal Kombat 10, I don't want to see them with the same variations. I want to see them with maybe, like, two of the same variations and maybe a third new one. Um, what is your favorite Melina skin? Um, her imp, no, Empress, no, no. Yeah, her 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 condom, her condom. I'd say her condom outfit. That was that was pretty cool. Um, but yes, so uh, I'm gonna go to bed every night, everyone. I'm leaving. I shall part with this. As Ryan Devore is alive and Molina is dead. Buchan, I am going to stalk you on Twitter and get you back for that. Molina MK9 skin. Oh, chocolate, you want that? You want that skin where she's running around with that gauze tape? Default is her best. Well, yeah, her her default was probably the most, you know, it was cool. Her default was pretty cool. Um, but I just thought her, her, her condom outfit probably just kind of made her look a bit more. It, it You know, it kind of gave her a, yeah. Yeah, Chocolate, I know, I know. You, you want to see Melina running around with that piece of tape. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. Anyways, Chocolate, I'm going to tell your girlfriend. I'm going to tell your girlfriend. I'm going to tell Paulette. I'm going to tell Paulette what you've been saying all up in the stream, talking about you trying to hook up with, hook up with Melina with her gauze tape. Her deception skin was the best. Oh, you know, young Ty, uh, young Ty, that's true. That's very true. Her deception outfit was probably the most impressive one. Um, uh, that you know, but see, that was she was wearing that costume because she was trying to she was trying to imitate Katana. She, I think she had tied up Katana. Katana had died or something, whatever. But she was trying to imitate Katana. And what was you know that always that was kind of funny to me because Katana always wore blue. But yet she had on Katana's outfit, but the outfit was pink. So it's like, you mean to tell me you just deceived all of Katana's armies because you put on this outfit and no one could tell that you actually had on your Molina color? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like, it's kind of her alternate costume MK11 was similar to her deception attire. You know, so anyways, and I remember, I think, I think at the ending, one of the endings for deception, you actually saw Katana wearing the same wearing the outfit that Molina had on but it was blue colored and so I was like I was like man the people in Adenia y'all stupid y'all are dumb y'all got fooled anyways Chrome would be cool similar to doo -doo 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 -doo. Triborg and Noob in a Lin Kuei takeover interesting do you think the game will have a more serious tone than has? well you know I honestly hope it does I really hope it does because I think they're going in a good direction. MKX kind of made the the Mortal Kombat world seem a little more realistic, kind of the same way um, you know Dark Knight did for the Batman series. Dark Knight kind of made Batman more realistic, so I think Mortal Kombat X kind of made the Mortal Kombat universe more realistic, and I think it, it's really good to see um, this you know to see the series and see the franchise get more serious because I think. You know, the one thing about the 2000 series, there was a lot of silliness going on. Like, there were a lot of fatalities where it was just kind of, like, silly. Just kind of made you laugh. People being thrown off towers. Draw, you know, hit, you know, hitting up against things. Aerial combat where people were jumping up in the sky and fighting. But the aerial combat looked really weird and it was really stiff. So, I think I think they really need to stick with a more serious, more realistic direction for this. Will Mortal Kombat 11 be announced this year? Can we expect it? This... Um, let's see, uh, Syed, I believe it's going to be in 2019 because they're going to continue to support Injustice 2 for the rest of the year, but I do believe we might get a trailer and we'll definitely get an announcement, I'm sure, before fall of this year. I'm hoping it'll be at E3, um, I hope it'll be at E3, uh, in June of this year, the, uh, official announcement, maybe a teaser trailer or something, um, and maybe they might even show us some some new characters because I remember when Mortal Kombat X was coming out, um, Netherrealm got really excited about the new characters that they had added. So they were showing a lot of footage of like Ferator. Um, they were showing some footage of Devora. They were showing you know stuff like that. That um, Triborg is the one and done is a one and done character. Yeah, Blood Scarlet. I don't think Triborg was a canon character. I think they just added him as a as just a fun factor for the fans to play. I don't think um, you know because. Cyber Sub Zero was a hidden character, uh, who was a part of Triborg, and we all know that Cyber Sub Zero, was, you know, Sub Zero had been restored from being a cyber. So, you know, so yeah, I heard a theory about Cascade could hook up with Kano's son, Dominic. That would throw shit up. Sonya would love it. 
You know, and I kind of have a theory that I believe that maybe they might be including Cassie Cage in Mortal Kombat 11 as a way to uh, as a as a way to remove Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade because when you think about it, look, you know, Cassie, Cassie, if you play as Cassie, you can basically play using both uh, Sonya and Johnny Cage's move sets. So I honestly believe that they're they're going to be using Cassie Cage in Mortal Kombat 11 as a way to kind of just basically kind of kick Sonya and kick uh, uh, Johnny Cage out. Maybe just make them non-playable characters, but um, it kind of seems it kind of yeah. You know, when you think about it, it doesn't really make make much sense to have like Johnny Cage, Sonya so Sonya Blade, and Cassie Cage, all three of them playable in Mortal Kombat 11 when you all three of them play as the, play the same. You know, not not the same, but you get what I mean. Cassie Cage can basically play as both her mother and her father. So I think I think they're going to use Cassie Cage in Mortal Kombat 11 as a way to kind of make room for more characters and kind of get Sonya Blade and and Johnny Cage out of the out of the picture. Um and and you know, look, you know, look at exactly what what they did with Jade. I've been so fi so focused on trying to explain why Katana had Jade's weapons, but honestly, I I now that I think about it, I think the reason they gave Katana Jade's weapons was a way for fans to play as Jade without including Jade in the game, which meant that that, that freed them up to basically include a brand new character instead of trying to bring Jade back. So, so I think sometimes Nether Realms does Nether does like a combination of characters as a way to maybe leave out certain other characters. So I think they might have just given Katana Jade's weapons just so that they could leave Jade out and it would make room for another character. So. Um, uh, even though I was hoping they would explain it better, but they they didn't. They didn't make it a part of their storyline or anything. So, anyways, okay, guys, I've been going for over 40 minutes. Um, we're up to 20 people in the stream, guys. Thank you so much for your support. I hope y'all have enjoyed the stream. Um, I've gone over 4K. I've gone over the 4 uh, 4K graphics. I've gone over 4K stages, 4K um, sound and music, um, and I honestly believe Mortal Kombat 11 is going to be the best yet because Netherrealm can now produce the game. All the all the all the systems can now play 4K content, so Mortal Kombat 11 will truly be the best in the entire game. I mean, in the entire series. Is Sub Zero and Raiden going to have their Injustice 2 skins? I hope so. They probably will because uh, Scorpion kept his Injustice 1 skin from Mortal Kombat 2. I mean, from Mortal Kombat 10. I hope Sindel gets her Deception attire. It would be interesting to see Sindel make it back. How would Sonya love Psychedelic? Like Sonya would be dead by the Nehevi Kano. Ooh. Okay, Blood, Blood Scarlet, I'll let y'all work that out on your own. But guys, thank you so much for tuning into this stream. I'll try to do more regular streams, okay? But hopefully I was able to give a lot of really good content that a lot of people found helpful and, and a lot of my own personal opinion thrown in there as well. Okay, uh, guys, look out. I'm going to be posting a video very soon where I'm going to actually do a collection of my roster. I'm gonna. I've put together the characters that I want to see on my roster, and I also have like what I would like to see for the storyline for Mortal Kombat 11. So I'm gonna do a video where I go one by one, and I'm gonna explain each character on my roster. I'm not saying I I know the roster for Mortal Kombat 11. I'm just saying I've put together my own roster of the characters I want to see. So stay tuned for that, and I might do it in a live stream or I might do a regular video. Don't know. So, but stay tuned for that, and um, guys, uh, anything else you want to know about Mortal Kombat 11, leave it in the comment section below, and I will keep maybe uh, making some more videos about that. But nowadays, people are starting to jump on the bandwagon. More people are pumping out videos for Mortal Kombat 11, if you've noticed. So, yeah, give, I see a variation of Sonya and Johnny's surround. Maybe the Kamidaga will have a part of the story. Maybe so, Chocolate. Maybe so. We'll have to wait and see. All right, guys, y'all have a great night. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Astronaut out.